Thank you for joining us on the sports on Prime. I'm Gary Al Smith. Today we have some news from the local football circuit and also some international news as well. Thank you for your time. Two days ago, we brought to you news tragically of um, the death of one person involved in the Kotoko team and also somebody else who was um, sleeping under a stationary vehicle. That news has dominated the local football scene and even the general news scene. And we have some good news now. Steve Pollack, the coach of the Red, Ashito Olenu, a midfielder and the driver of the Kotoko uh, bus, Nana Berchi, are all in a stable condition. Currently, everybody is okay. Um, Steve and then the driver were in theater yesterday. The operations were successful. They are quite okay this morning. They've been able to talk to their families and then any person who came around. Olenu is also okay. He's also responding to treatment. Mm. Yeah. If you say they are okay, um, uh, what does it mean? it mean? Does it mean that they are out of the critical condition that they were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they are out of critical condition. Um, now we're just um, trying to see how to get them out of the hospital. Not that quick, but then they are okay. To say, I can't give you the details of what we've done, but then. To sum it up, everybody is okay. Yeah. For Ashito Olin, there's been concerns raised that um, he didn't get any bruises, but he's still being observed. What really is the problem? Well, um, you see, in any accident, um, the body takes the whole impact from the vehicle, and the body reacts in different ways. Different people react differently. So for Ashite, um, what I can say is she, he had some fractures um, on the right side of the ribs, and then Yes, we wanted to make sure he's fully okay before he goes home. So, and over here he stays alone. We didn't want to take any chance. So, but it's it's okay. Maybe by tomorrow, tomorrow night he should be out of the hospital. Okay. Yesterday when I was here, I observed Coach Steve Polak, and he had this collar around his neck. I'm sure that he had some neck pains and all that. How is he? What about that as well? Yeah, it was um, a precautionary measure. Now. We've taken out the collar. It's fine. I mean, he's moving about. He was even trying to select his team for the match between Hats and Kotoko. So that is that should tell you how strong he is now. Uh, has it been told that the match has been postponed? Um, officially, we've not received. I have not received anything from um, to that effect. But okay. we told him that yeah, the match wouldn't come on. Excellent news there. Uh, let's do some Ghana Premier League fixtures now. This weekend, the show must go on. There will be no Kotoko versus Hearts, but there will be Wild Stars versus Liberty Professionals, Brikum Chelsea versus Wafa, Bicham United versus Boga All Stars, also Ashgold, Elmina Sharks, Adriana Stars, Ebrisian Drafts, Great Olympics, Mediama. And Tema Youth versus Inter Allies, Asante Kotoko versus Heart of Folk of course, has been postponed. Let's talk about transfers. We understand that the move involving Alvaro Morata may have been dead. Just 10 minutes ago, Jose Mourinho was speaking at a press conference uh, at the UCLA in the United States, and he was saying that, yes, indeed, Man United spoke to Alvaro Morata and Real Madrid, but it looks like that move is dead. He also said that Zlatan Ibrahimovic could likely come and play for Manchester United again. It seems that the Swedish international um, will be well by November and December. So that just came in 10 minutes ago. Elsewhere, Joe Hart, the goalkeeper, is close to joining West Ham and Timoe Bakayoko is Chelsea bound. Find out exactly what's going on with this man and West Ham United. They're hoping, we understand, to finalise a deal to sign the Manchester City goalkeeper Joe Hart within 48 hours. That's according, of course, to Sky Sources. He's having a medical today, and it's understood that England number one would join initially on loan with the option of making the move permanent next summer. OK, now another deal that is moving closer, as you mentioned at the top. Sky Sources told us yesterday that Monaco have agreed £40 million with Chelsea for Timue Bakayoko. We understand a medical could happen over the weekend. It's been slightly delayed due to a knee injury suffered by the player at the end of last season. So we'll keep across that one. We're expecting an announcement fairly imminently on that. This is one that grew legs overnight because according to reports in Germany, Liverpool have had a £57 million bid rejected by RB Leipzig for midfielder Naby Keita. Liverpool have made no comment on this. Earlier this month, we reported that Liverpool were interested in the player, but that the German club were adamant he would not be sold. Now, Liverpool have been 
accused of being a little bit slow in this transfer market, but this is one that is reportedly moving on. Reports in several places today are suggesting that negotiations are back on between Liverpool and Southampton over the signing of Virgil van Dijk. Remember, Southampton asked the Premier League to investigate Liverpool over an alleged illegal approach for the player last month. Liverpool escaped punishment on that occasion. Southampton, though, have been unmoved throughout the summer and have told us again this morning that their Dutch defender is not for sale. Now another one which really gathered pace yesterday. Everton had a £40 million bid rejected for this man, Gilfie Sigurdsson, this week. The player did not travel to the USA with the rest of the squad yesterday as, in the words of the club, he's not in the right frame of mind. Leicester, though, had a superior bid of £40 million plus add-ons rejected earlier in the window. Everton are expected to come back with an improved offer, but Swansea are holding out for £50 million. There aren't any major moves involving Ghanaian players to report. However, there was one involving Suleiman Tari's younger brother, Muniru, and it's caught the headlines because the owner of his club made some very incendiary comments, and so this was it. His name is Gigi Bechali. He's the owner of Stera Bucharesti, and he said, I am fine with black players from Europe because they are civilized. I will not take the ones from Africa. They do not adapt. They, do not ha they don't have any education, they are not civilized and they are rude. So that was from Gigi Bechali. There, there are a lot of calls for UEFA and FIFA to clamp down on this sort of thing as well. So we'll be discussing this transfer move and what it means for Silim Muniru and others tomorrow on, on the move on Joy 99.7 FM. We can take just two comments before we do wind building on this story. A uh, lot of you are reacting to it. Kwesi Emmanuel says, and FIFA heard this and are waiting for what? Felipe Gonzalez says, the man spoke his mind. If he silently rejected African players, how would we know his club's intentions? However, it pains me when Africans go to such places and don't perform. They should prove such people wrong when they get such opportunities. So, so that's the sport. Thanks for your time. We have G and I coming now.